YouTube channel. Eh? What do I talk about? Who do I be? What version of me do I be? Do I be the one that fits into society? Do I be the one that everybody likes? Or do I just be me? When I was three years old, toddler, I screamed, especially in the supermarket. My mum would have a reaction and try to stop me. Don't do that here. So embarrassing. I'm sure she was feeling, I don't think I'm a bad parent. My child is out of control. My child is screaming. Well, at 36 years old, 33 years later, her eldest daughter, me, decided to go out of control. Now I could say that something else was leading me. In fact, I always knew it was me. There was an energy within me that was giving me confidence. Confidence that I had never seen before or had. Confidence that allowed me to unlock a door, a door to a world that I hadn't seen. And this door allowed me to break free, allowing the cogs of energy to be free flowing around me, through me, beside me. This free-flowing energy, however, had the medical industry stating that I had psychosis, had the police thinking I'd lost it because I was showing emotion, which, by the way, is not a criminal offence. If I'm an empathic being and their energy is fucking dark, I'm going to match that. I was unaware that I was empathic until it unlocked in 2023. Actually, it was a little bit before that when my ex-partner gave me magic mushrooms for the first time. And little old me goes, choose the number between 3.5 and 4, so I went, 3.7, so many grams I did. Apparently it's her an heroic dose. I dived right in, the universe unlocked, it opened up and God, creator, source went, here you go. Here's Pandora's box. Here's the universe unlocked. Work it out. Instantly, almost, no, it wasn't instantly, but my ears started ringing. And I felt this wanting to know more. Angel numbers started opening up, double numbers, triple numbers. Google helped a little bit, but then I wanted to know more. Upon every door opening, a newer version of me came out, a newer version of me came through, this new version of courage to be who I am, came through. Within this newfound identity, way of living, I lost the old version of me. And that's when my family and my employees and everyone started to get a bit worried. But they didn't. Because they never actually came and sat down with me when Kylie, what's going on? It was met with this, you're wrong, you can't do that. Why are you acting so unlike yourself? Well, some spiritual beings call it the dark night of the soul. 
Oh, I call it a journey to awakening. <sighs> Without this journey that has unfolded within me, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have felt what I needed to feel to step into a bolder, braver, kinder, stronger version of me. A lot of people got hurt in my journey, my journey to self-discovery. But the biggest one who got hurt was me. Because I love that older version. The older version was me. So now I'm in this new energy of me where I'm comfortable of being vulnerable putting myself out, feeling my emotions as they come up, wherever they come up. Oh, and they come up in weird places. <laughs> uh, most recently was the tram at Snowbird here in Utah. If you were one of the 80 people that was on that tram while I'm screaming out for mum to help me or like, or just feeling everyone else's emotions, thank you. Thank you, everyone. You've got some dark shit in you because I know because I felt it. Oh, this confusing journey has been the most empowering journey for me because now I'm able to see and I'm able to see that the emotions that come through me are not always mine. When I was angry and not communicating with the police when I got arrested, I knew that I was matching the energy of that police officer. It actually had me screaming like a tribal warrior. I'm going to say princess, a tribal warrior princess. A little bratty tribal warrior princess, by the way, who just screamed out being like, new world, like, here we are, guys, have fun. I'm screaming out, whooping and war war wallowing, like, and kind of going, you know what, your guns don't scare me because I've got a big voice and I can scream. <laughs> That's what happened in the tram at Snowbird. I did scream. And then a few others who were on that tram now stated that I was crazy, I should be put in a home, I'm not okay. I realised that... Showing emotion is not something that I was ever taught to do. I was taught to store them, keep them inside, never let them out. Upon learning to get comfortable setting my emotions free, well, guess what, society? You labelled me. The medical industry said that I need more uh, antipsychotics Lanzapine, that's what they put me on. I needed a lanzapine because I'm showing emotions and now I'm cuckoo, crazy, put me in a home, keep me medicated. Two weeks they kept me in there. Now I know a lot of other stories of people who have been in the medical industry, in the mental health industry, as patients, for a lot longer than two weeks, some less. Some leave with a very empowering story. Others have a similar story to mine, which is that the system's rather broken and that those drugs that people are putting me on are worse than the thoughts that I had before. Now, I went to the local swimming pool naked. Some people would have thought that was funny. Others called the police, who then called the ambulance, and the ambulance took me to the hospital. Now, I'm not going to go into this story today. This is just the start of my journey. There will be many, many, many stories to come. 
my 2023 took me on the most largest awakening human journey that I have been on in this lifetime. I have seen things that I never thought that I would see. The other side of a jail cell for one, the medical industry getting good at spitting out the uh, drugs that was given to me, being force injected by the medical industry, seeing people in there who are getting shock therapy because well, this gentleman thought he was the king. There's a part of him that probably thinks he is. In fact, I know it. But it's the power that's within him in his journey. When I tapped into my past lives, when they were gifted to me from source, it was Eve from the Bible. And my partner to me was Adam. And this wild journey, wild, wild journey, allowed me to become more courageous, more strong, more determined, more willing just to be me. I started hugging trees. I started dancing in the street. As a human, a woman, 36 years on this planet, there's been a lot of insecurities within me. I've always known that I belonged and had friends and loved life. And it wasn't until COVID hit where I owned a business in Australia, in Victoria, of one of the most locked down states in the country. It created me to stand up not only for myself or those who worked for me, but I'd learned to stand up to authorities. I started to look deeper, not only in myself, but in the world that I had once called home. I started to analyze and ask questions. I studied the law of mankind is a way to stand up for oneself in a court of law I started practicing and the more I practiced the more I looked at that and realized heck I used to just travel the world and hike snowboard I was learning rock climbing and now I'm out here fighting for what's right where do I want to be <laughs> You're vaccinated or you're unvaccinated. Oh, you're, I don't know, your hair's fucking black or you're a dick. Well, you're, you know what? I can see why wars are created. It's just a process through everyone's own entities and egos and inner shit. I look at all the nasty things that people say to me when I'm simply just expressing an emotion in a space. That is me. And I'm labelled the crazy one. Yet I've done a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of healing. Heck, if anyone was addicted to anything, it was me. I was addicted to healing. Every time I felt a new inner insecurity, I booked another healing session. I wanted to let it go. I studied holistic healing and I started holding sessions on other people. But then there was a part of me that went, no, 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 you need, you, you've got more shit in you, girl. You need more healing sessions. So I did more. I took myself on journeys. These journeys where I took my clients to spaces where there were witches in past lives and they were unable to fully express themselves in this life due to a fear of being burned at the stake. Now, my main fear in my journeys that I went to, which took a few sessions to get to, was always there was a cog 
that needed lubricating to keep spinning. Or that I was in a muddy tunnel full of crocodiles. And little by little, the next step would come and I'd be able to get myself out of the mud. There'd be a light at the end of the tunnel. It was so far away, I wouldn't be able to get it. Then someone would put down a rope and I'd grab onto that rope and I'd pull myself up and I'd get up and I'd be able to make it through. <sighs> I realised that each time I did more healing, more work, that there were a lot of things that I couldn't do alone. And I needed that help. Learning to love all of me, I mean all of me, has been the biggest journey. It's hard. For I realised in this life, everything I learned, I learned from my parents. Everything. Their personalities, their insecurities, their generational crap that they've brought through, grandma stuff, grandpa stuff, like, it's a lot of shit. And I realised that my parents never spoke about any of it. So I learnt that. I learnt not to scream. I learnt not to cry. I learnt not to step out of line. Life took me on a journey. And the only thing that it ever taught me is that the only time I ever have is now. I look around and I notice there's a lot of people stuck. But they don't know that they're stuck. And that's okay. It's okay. I've been chasing a carrot. I've been like this little rabbit. <laughs> this hungry little rabbit who wants to get the carrot because I always want to be there and I'm not accepting being here. Now, that carrot was my healing sessions. That carrot was, oh, I've had this awakening and I've experienced all these little feelings and I want to be there. I want to be that version. How do I even know that version is real? Heck, it could have just been any of the energies that I've picked up from anywhere. <laughs> could have been your energy. I have cried and cried and cried. I've loved it. I've loved it and hated it all at the same time. First the tears were liberating. Then they became painful when they kept going. I realised I was crying on this every single day. Sometimes a lot, sometimes only a little bit. I realised most emotions only last for 90 seconds, so that gave me this empowerment to actually feel it. And I kept process. I have taken down my own barriers. And I understand that life is a journey. I understand there are many, many, many things in this life that I do not agree with. But it doesn't make it go away. Heck, I love cacti and cactus. But I'm not going to hug one. I'll admire it from a distance or I might even get close and just like tickle his little, little spike. 
but I'm not going to stay around and hug it or even make love to it because it's going to hurt me. And I look at the medical industry the same and also the police system, but I honour and acknowledge that it's there for a reason. Everything exists. But I can choose to be a part of it or I can choose to walk in the opposite direction. For years, these industries were not in my reality. I hadn't gone to the doctor. I, I didn't even take aspirin or Panadol, let alone drugs from a medical industry. I've started to look at my body as a map, a map to understanding myself deeper, longer and more. My body is a magical, magical thing. more I realise that every universe that exists. I've been there. I've travelled there. All knowledge of the universe lies within me. And it's dangling the carrot again. The more that I search for answers or wanting doors to open, the more that I realise I'm giving my power away. Life on earth is generally slow. It takes time. Things grow slowly. However, recently, things have been growing exponentially quicker. And they've stopped making sense. The universe doesn't have to make sense. Our human mind wants to make sense of it. And that's what creates things to be a little bit confusing. Because those rabbit teeth again. Just jades and the carrot. I happen to be hungry. <laughs> the more things stop making sense, the more they made sense. Because the creation timeline of what is happening is in perfect alignment with all that be. Today is a day for me to begin my journey, to step into my truth and to allow the world and those who wish to watch an opportunity to see themselves. There's a lot of brave souls out there that I've met who too have seen things that they don't agree with. And I truly hope that my story and stories that you reach those brave souls. Because the trauma that I experienced during COVID, I know I'm not the only one. I learned to stand up to a lot. And the biggest thing I learned to stand up to was me. My own barriers came down. And what I was once afraid of, I'm not afraid of anymore.
that inner voice in my head had power for a long time. But that inner voice in my head today gets to die. This is day one. Day one of a new journey. Let's call it Raw. I am a raw human. I have stripped the layers of myself and gone within. And it has been A liberating, yet always community destroying experience. But within that, I've created new space, new space for me. There's a part of me that wants to keep talking. But right now I'm going to honour this, honour this space and tap out. Thank you for all those who have chosen to step into my space and start listening. I truly hope that my journey becomes an empowering one for many others to understand that feelings do not lie, they guide. And through these guided feelings, we are guided into a new life. It is with great honour and privilege that I acknowledge that my heart is realigned and truly, truly open, unbroken, and raw to opening all doors on this earth plane 